Jim, my last question here, uh, you know, about 18 months ago, you and I co-presented at a conference for chief compliance officers. And what we wanted to do was to help them elevate their game, to help them, you know, they want to get a seat at the table. And uh, we thought that they could uh, maybe move in that direction by better engagement around risk oversight, for example. In many organizations, chief risk officers are still reporting below the C-suite and they're struggling also to become more relevant. What advice would you have to help these chief risk officers to elevate their game? And what do directors on the, the board level want and need from chief risk officers? Yeah, we had a good time, I had a good time um, sitting side by side with you uh, in that uh, session um, that we did a few years ago. I, I think that, you know, there are several things that I think it's very important to a board, you know, i make an observation. Uh, Peter Uberoth, um, he was an Olympic guy, you know, LA Olympics. He, made a, he, he served on a number of audit committees, <clears throat> and I was at a conference year, many years ago, and he made an observation about, you know, making people work for you, you know. And mm -hmm. the CRO is definitely in a position to assist a board, and particularly inform it, its risk oversight. But the board's got to make sure that CEO is positioned for success. And so you start with, you know, defining expectations. Is the board, <clears throat> is the CRO uh, a champion, or is the CRO a viable line of defense? I mean, a champion, is, it does great things, facilitates the, uh, the, the execution of a framework within the organization, does a lot of coordination, does a lot of education, uh, assist people with reporting, all these great things. They're wonderful things. But a champion has some teeth, some escalatory and sometimes some veto authority teeth. And so uh, by, by reference, the champion can have access uh, to the board or access to the CEO. That teeth is extremely important if you want a, a line of defense. And then a second point is making sure that the culture of the organization emphasizes the everyone is responsible mantra. So looking at the traditional lines of defense model, uh, your, your, your business unit owners and process owners and functional leaders, they should own the risk that their respective activities, excuse me, create. And um, that is, that is, if that doesn't exist, a CRO, a CRO's job is almost impossible. You know, I mean, if nobody mm -hmm. cares, uh, it's very, very difficult. Now the CRO can partner with these first line of defense individuals and units and function and, and, and partner with them in terms of coming up with the best approach and managing the risk that their activities uh, create all in the context of the business plan. And then uh, positioning the CRO appropriately within the organization to report directly to the board, have access to the CEO, uh, that's extremely important. The CRO can also do something. CRO can think more strategically. Uh, the CRO can focus more um, in terms of linking opportunity and risk and dialoguing with people throughout the organization. And the CRO can uh, focus on maximizing the effectiveness of board communication. All told, the CRO properly positioned can really help the board inform its risk oversight. Mm -hmm. And so whether you're going into a new geography with new business, you're going to turn around Cadillac, you're going to do X, Y, Z, you know, having that risk perspective and um, the linkage to the business strategy uh, really helps people make better decisions. Exactly. And uh, that's where the value is, in my opinion. Exactly. Well, Jim, I want to thank you for your time today. It's been great. Uh, but before we go, is there anything that I may have missed that you'd like to mention to the, the, the audience here? Well, well thank you. 
thank you for inviting me, Jay. Uh, this is a uh, it's been I've enjoyed the conversation. I always enjoy whatever time we are able, whenever we're able to spend time together. Uh, you know, I would just suggest two things. One is um, that when you look at the COSO framework, when you look at the ISO framework, when you look at all these different frameworks, uh, whatever they are, just make sure that your organization focuses on four things. Uh, focus on integrating risk with strategy, integrating mm -hmm. risk with performance, integrating risk with decision making, mm -hmm. uh, and Building a strong risk governance and culture. Those four things. You know, kind of like going back to the movie. One thing. You know, just one thing. Everything else, not that important. But those four things. And kind of focus on those four things. Use these frameworks to help you advance your game in dealing with those four things. The other thing I would suggest, I, I posed three questions in the contemporary view of risk management, and I kind of see that, see, we're kind of bogged down into risk listing, mm -hmm. listing risk, and I, I call that enterprise list management, you know, we're, mm -hmm. we're listing risk, and while that's great, has dialogue, I think the, the question we got to ask today, do we or do we not have risk-informed decision making across this organization? Because that's the game now. Mm -hmm. we got to make decisions. We're going to increase information velocity. Are we informing those decisions? Uh, are, we, are we really creating a risk-informed culture, a risk-informed decision-making culture within our organization? Risk listing, that's an analog solution that was developed in the 1990s. We have the 21st century here, and we have a myriad of digital concepts and tools that are being used to reimagine processes and functions. Why not also reimagining risk management to put information in the hands, you know, of decision makers near real time? Why not? It's possible. It's feasible. We're doing it at Fertility and helping companies. So that would be my challenge that I would leave our guest on your broadcast. Mm -hmm. Well, I wanted to spend some time talking about enhancing corporate strategy confidence by integrating performance, risk, and incentives. You've knocked it out of the ballpark. I really appreciate your time today, Jim. Thanks so much. Thank you, Jay. Take good care. We'll Bye -bye. see you.